Thank you. I'm Deep Bonik. I'm doing my master's at University of Oklahoma under the supervision of Dr. Royce Floyd. I'm going to present my works on effect of fiber type and content on behavior of UHP FRC for pre-stress garter repair. And also I'm going to share some preliminary results. Uh, UHPC or ultra high performance concrete is also referred as UHP FRC or ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete to actually note the key role fiber plays in UHPC. Uh, though there is no standard definition of UHPC, uh, it is generally accepted as a, having compressive strength of 18 to 30 KSI and post cracking tensile strength of 700 to 900 PSI. And also Federal Highway Administration has defined UHPC having compressive strength greater than 21.7 KSI and post cracking flexor strength of 720 KSI. Also ACI defined it having compressive strength of 22 KSI and also having significant tensile ductility. Uh, UHPC has several advantages. Uh, UHPC is highly flowable and also it has somewhat self-consolidating uh, self properties. And also we can find like UHPC core is, UHPC core has discontinuous pore structure. So uh, it has negligible permeability and also it does it enhances its durability. And so we can see that UHPC has superior free thaw and impact resistance and also fibers included in UHPC can provide post cracking tensile ductility. Uh, my works uh, includes like measuring the uh, in, uh, how fibers, different type of fibers actually impact the properties of UHPC. I am studying like two different type of straight fibers. Uh, those are somewhat similar in aspect ratio and length of 0.5 inch. Uh, made by two different manufacturers and also another 1.2 inch uh, hook tent fibers. Uh, also, I'm going to uh, going to study the fiber, how fiber content actually impact the UHPC properties and also uh, whether UHPC can be used as structural repair product. Uh, the base, uh, the baseline mix design that developed at UHPC uh, is fine graded and we have the uh, same amount of same sand and cementitious material by weight and the cementitious materials actually contain 60% type on cement, 30% slag and 10% silica fume by weight. Uh, also the water to cementitious material ratio is 0.2 and we have to use the high range water reducer to compensate for that, uh, for that uh, lower water to cementitious material ratio and somewhat we have to uh, change the high range water reducer uh, depending on the application and the flow we want. And also the base mix design includes 2% steel fibers by volume. And we can also tailor it depending on our needs. Uh, the general mixing procedure that we follow are like we mix the uh, dry materials for 10 minutes. Then we mix the half of high range water reducer and water to the dry material. And we let it mix for uh, further one minute. And then we add the remaining high range water reducer. And then we'll let it uh, flow for a couple of mix for a couple of minutes to get somewhat flowable mixer mix. And then we add the steel fibers and then we'll let it uh, further mix for a couple of minutes uh, to ensure the proper distribution of fibers. Uh, we did compressive strength, uh, compressive strength study on the UHPC on three inch by six inch cylinder according to SGMC 39 and also using some modification from ASTMC 1856 and the loading rate we used are 150 PSA per second. Uh, we can see that the fibers cannot provide any, um, provide any strain hardening properties and compressive strain. However, it can prevent the very brittle failure. And also, and also we can see that the, uh, with the volume increases, fiber volume increases, like we do not gain any, uh, we get little to no increase in compressive strength. Uh, also like for the type 3 fiber, which is very long fibers, like uh, we got some consolidation issue for the smaller cylinders. Also we have studied modulus of elasticity uh, test on four inch by eight inch cylinder according to ASTMC uh, 469 also for modification from ASTMC 1856. Um, like compressive strength results, we see little to no gain in modulus of elasticity uh, because of inclusion of a higher amount of fibers. 
Uh, however, uh, it might be uh, notable that uh, the type three fibers actually might be better in those four inch by eight inch cylinders rather than three inch by six inch cylinders. Also we studied the flexural strength test on uh, three inch by three inch by 12 inch prisms having a nine inch effective length uh, utilizing the STMC 78 and the STMC 1609. Uh, from the general flexural response curve, we can see that uh, after the first crack, we actually, uh, we actually saw that uh, rather than the crack widening up, we saw multiple cracks forming in middle. And also we've seen that the uh, peak stress capacity is actually higher than the first cracking stress. Uh, also, also the, the flexural strength was uh, highly effective uh, when we actually increased the fiber volume. So up to 4%, but like when you go beyond like 4%, like up to 6%, like it, it creates some consolidation issues there. So we don't see uh, that much benefit for that. Uh, also, we have seen the uh, longer type 3 fibers are better at bridging cracks. We studied split tensile test uh, on 3 inch by 6 inch cylinders, and also we have seen some consolidation issues for longer type 3 fibers. And the notable thing is that, like, when we have reached the maximum load, the stress even crashed alongside its length. So, when we did the maximum load, it acted like a compression test rather than a tensile test. Uh, so from the general curve, we'll see first crack point, then the highest, highest load and highest load sustained load was way too high than the first crack load. And also we have seen the strain hardening behavior there. And we, we have seen the actually increasing fiber percentages increases the split tensile test. And for, as I mentioned, like the fiber types, we have seen some consolidation issues. Uh, we studied the direct tensile test that was uh, done on like 2 inch by 2 inch by 17 inch prism based on the work of Gravel and Baby with modifications for available equipment that we have. Uh, general direct tensile response was the same as the other tensile responses and also uh, we have seen like up to 4% like some gain in uh, maximum XL exile test uh, stress uh, for type two fibers up to 4% and like for type three fibers and also for type two fiber with 6% fibers, we have seen some consolidation issue that might impact our results. We studied the free store resistance on the specimens that are similar as we did for the flexural response. Uh, we studied on like three inch by three inch by 12 inch prisms, like those prisms had uh, type 3 fibers with 1% and 2% by volume, and two specimens from each fiber percentages were loaded uh, till the first crack using third part bending setups. And then we placed those both cracked and unpicked specimens in the freestyle chamber and we did uh, study the resonant frequency. We measured the resonant frequency in the interval of 36 or less uh, freestyle cycles. Uh, from the resonant frequency that we have gained, you can see that like for type 3 fiber having 1% fiber by volume, the, uh, actually the cracked specimen actually gain uh, relative dynamic modulus uh, over the course of free cycles. That can be because like uh, the, in the suitable condition, the UHPC might be able to hydrate the unhydrated cement paste that's inside it, that water can reach there because of the crack. Uh, but the, for the 2%, we haven't seen that much of increase compared to 1% by volume. That might be because like a uh, higher amount of fibers are actually bridging the gaps pretty good from the start. Uh, also we have studied uh, <coughs> whether we can use the UHPC to uh, repair structures structure elements. So there is a ASTO type 2 half-scale priestess girder. Uh, the priestess girder was loaded until the failure indicated by that crushing and the, uh, the controlling failure mechanism was spawn shear failure. Uh, so we used uh, type 2 fiber have, uh, with 2% type 2 fiber UHPC to uh, repair this cracked area. 
So we have used shear start and like uh, UHPC to jacket those uh, cracked area. And also we have tried to, uh, we try to like uh, repair the part of the deck using rapid set cement. And then we loaded the repaired girder in the similar fashion. And now we have seen the controlling uh, control failure mechanism was bond shear failure. And also we have seen the capacity was much higher than the, like, the uncracked girder. Uh, so which indicate that like we are able to uh, completely um, repair the shear failures that we had, the shear cracks that we had, and we have like uh, better section properties when we are used UHPC jacketing. So the preliminary observations that uh, from my works are like the fiber amount has little significance on the compressive strength, and also tensor strengths are always benefited from the increased fiber amounts, but in our case, we have said that benefits is up to 4%. Uh, from the MOR test, we see that like type 3 fibers can breach cracks better than the smaller fibers. So we need to make sure that the fiber distribution is good. And also HPC may be able to heal cracks under suitable conditions. And we, can, we have seen that like UHPC can be a suitable product for structural repair. Uh, our, my ongoing works are relating to complete the free store test and also uh, measure the residual flexural capacity of the specimens. And also we're trying to uh, study the effect of synthetic fibers to look into, into synthetic fibers for on UHPC properties and also trying to uh, fill, the, uh, fill the spaces in, the, um, in my graphs and to complete the analysis of the results. Thank you.